Hey everybody, I'm Justin Zarr with bowhunting.com. Today we're gonna to be taking you through the process of making venison summer sausage. I know this is something that all hunters love, or at least all the hunters I know love venison summer sausage. And like a lot of guys, you know, when I was younger, I took my deer to the local deer processor, dropped it off, told them what I wanted, picked up the sausage and enjoyed it. Uh, but the last couple of years, I decided I wanted to learn how to start processing my own deer and making some of my own sausage, jerky, snack sticks, stuff like that. So I started with venison sausage a couple of years ago, and it's a surprisingly simple, an easy process that just about anybody can do without a lot of fancy tools. Now, um, I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through everything that I use. Now, all of this stuff isn't 100% necessary, but I found that a lot of it is very helpful along the way. So, uh, let's get started. From left to right, I'm just gonna kind of talk about everything that is in front of me, and then we'll get started on the actual process. So, uh, first, supply-wise, this is gonna be a meat grinder that we've got here. Next up, we've got our seasonings, our cure, and some high-temperature cheese. Got a set of hog ring pliers and our fibrous casings that we're gonna use to actually stuff the sausage with. We've got a meat lug with our venison in it. So we've got some ground venison here. I've got a mixing bowl with warm water that's actually soaking my fibrous casings that I'm gonna use. I have another mixing bowl and then I've got a sausage stuffer. So this is everything that I'm gonna need minus the smoker which is outside to make venison summer sausage. All right, well, let's start with the most important thing, and that's gonna be the meat mixture, right? It's gonna be the basis of what we're doing today, making venison summer sausage. We need some venison. So as you can see, I've got a lem meat lug here. I've got 25 pounds of ground venison in here. Now, the most important thing to understand when you're making venison summer sausage is that straight venison is not going to work. So if you're processing your deer on your own and you're using a meat grinder like this to grind up all your you know, trimmings and whatnot into sausage meat, you're gonna need to add some either pork or beef to it. You need something with a little bit more fat content. Venison by itself is far too lean to make a good sausage. It turns out dry, it tends to crumble apart, doesn't hold together. So you wanna mix about 15 to 20% of some other higher fat content meat. Pork seems to be the preferred meat that people like to use in their summer sausage. Beef works just as well. So if you're grinding your own meat at home, you can go to the local butcher shop. You can either buy pork fat or you can uh, buy beef fat if they have it and you can mix that in with your grind. Uh, this particular batch that I've got here today came from my local processor. Uh, shout out to the Smokehouse in Rockford, Illinois. These guys do a great job. When I have them process my deer, I have them add pork fat to it. You do have to pay a little bit extra for it naturally because they're adding more meat and fat into your product. But that way when I get my uh, venison back, it comes in one pound packages that's pre-mixed with about a 20% pork fat content, uh, which is great and it's perfect for doing things like whether you're making burgers or meatloaf or sausage or snack sticks or anything like that, it's really great to have that little extra fat in there. So I've got 25 pounds of meat here. I thawed it out last night, unpackaged it. I've got it fairly mixed together here in my meat love. Next things we're gonna take a look at is gonna be your seasoning. Now this is gonna be personal preference depending on what you guys like. I've tried a variety of different seasonings from a lot of different companies, some of which I can't even remember, uh, but ultimately the two favorites that I've settled on are gonna be from Lem. I think their Backwoods seasoning for their summer sausage is really, really good. Uh, I also like the stuff from Walton's as well, which is what we're using today, which are Excalibur seasonings. Uh, I found that a lot of the commercial processors use this brand of seasonings and, and I've really, really been happy with it as has everybody who's eaten the sausage that I've made. So today we're using uh, the stuff from Walton's. This is their H summer unit is what this is called. This is a very standard run of the mill summer sausage mix. So this is the kind of the middle of the road. It's not spicy, it's not overly tangy, doesn't have any crazy flavors to it. It's just a really good solid base for a summer sausage. So I've got this. Now, the other thing you're gonna wanna make sure that you pay attention to is how much seasoning you're using to how much meat you're actually mixing and what you're going to be preparing. This particular bag here is meant to season 25 pounds of meat, which is why I have 25 pounds here. Now, there are formulas on the Walton's website. If you're making five pounds, 10 pounds, 12 pounds, whatever it's gonna be, they'll tell you exactly how much seasoning you need to use in your meat. So that's gonna be our seasoning mix. The next most important thing is gonna be your cure. You know, summer sausage is a cured sausage, which means it's able to be stored at room temperature. It doesn't need to be refrigerated because it is cured. And this cure is gonna inhibit the bacteria growth in the meat. Uh, that's actually why it's called summer sausage, oddly enough. I looked this up when I started down this journey and it's called summer sausage because it can be eaten during the summer. It can be made in the fall or winter and then eaten during the summer. It does not need to be refrigerated. So kind of just an interesting fact. But 
You also want to make sure that you're using the proper amount of cure for the amount of meat that you are making. So I'm using the Sure Cure product. This again is, is from the folks over at Walton's and I need one ounce of Sure Cure or pink salt or whatever you want to call it to season and cure this meat. Now you'll see a lot of guys that just put the cure right on here and then mix it in. And that works great if you're using an actual meat mixer, a device to mix your meat. Unfortunately, I don't have one, so I'm gonna be mixing by hand today. So what I like to do is I like to take my, my cure and I'll actually use a small mixing bowl, put it in here, dilute it with water, mix it all up, and then I'll put it in because you wanna make sure that your cure is really evenly distributed throughout your meat. It's a very important thing when you're making summer sausage to make sure that the entire batch is cured and seasoned evenly. Uh, you don't want big spots of meat uh, that don't have any cure on them because then you have the potential to uh, introduce that bacteria in there. So that's how I'm gonna do it today. The last thing I've got here, and of course this is optional, this is gonna be some high temp cheddar cheese. Now when you're making summer sausage, um, you know, in the old days, I never even realized there was such a thing as a high temperature cheese. I thought I would just go to the local supermarket, grab a brick of cheese, slice it up and, and toss it in here. Turns out that's not accurate. You need cheese that's gonna be able to resist higher temperatures when you're smoking this meat later so that it doesn't melt inside of the sausage. So make sure you're using high temp cheese. There's all sorts of different types available. Mozzarella, Swiss, pepper jack. Everybody seems to like cheddar, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. So I'm gonna be doing a standard summer sausage with high temp cheddar cheese mix. So let's get started. All right, well, we've got our meat seasoned, cured, and we've got our high temp cheese all mixed in here. You wanna mix this to the point that the meat's getting kind of tacky and it's starting to stick to your hands uh, and it's kind of sticking. You can notice as I pick this up right here, it's kind of like, it doesn't wanna pull apart super easy. It's kind of tacky and sticky. That's exactly how you want this meat before you start stuffing it. So, you know, when I first got started making sausages, the only thing I had was a grinder and I had the stuffer attachment for the front and it worked okay. Uh, got me through the first couple times, but the more and more sausages that I did, the more I realized mm, this isn't the best way to do it. So I went ahead and I bought uh, a sausage stuffer, which is what this machine is right here. This is an, uh, a manual sausage stuffer. This hopper right here holds about five pounds of meat in it, which is great because what I like to do is fill this thing all the way up to the top. I use about half of it per sausage that I make. So I'm making about two and a half pounds, give or take, per sausage. The casings that I'm using are the larger ones. So this is, I think it's a two and a quarter inch across by about 20 inches wide. You buy these in a 25 pack. Um, again, Walton's has these, or actually if you buy the Lem uh, Backwoods kit, it actually comes in the kit as well. So as I showed you earlier, we've got about uh, 10 of them in here. They've been soaking in water to, to um, soften them up quite a bit. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get the hopper filled up with meat, and then we're gonna start stuffing these casings. All right, so we've got our first sausage casing stuffed, as you can see here. You wanna keep it you know, as tight as you can inside the casing. Don't overdo it because you can actually break these casings if you get a little bit too crazy with it. But as you can see, I like to pinch it off and kind of leave a couple inches here just to you know, work with. I've done it before where you go all the way out to the end and then you can't close the thing and then you're taking meat out of it and it's just an actual pain. So you're better to leave yourself about a handful right there. And then what you wanna do is just pinch it down as tight as you can you're gonna go ahead and spin this thing. So you're really trying to compact that meat as much as you can inside that casing. Now you're gonna take your hog ring pliers, you're gonna go as tight as you can with those hog ring pliers to close that off, and now your first sausage ultimately is done. Um, some of the casings I've noticed, like these ones from Walton, they actually have little tiny holes in them. So you're gonna to start to see some meat, maybe some moisture that is coming out of those holes. That's because we actually want the sausage to dry out. Um, during the curing and smoking process. That's what those holes are there for. So you can just kind of wipe off that excess. And then at this point, you're pretty much done. This sausage here is ready to cure. I need to obviously stuff the rest of these, but I'm gonna make them all right about that same size. So you're gonna get about you know two and a half pounds, give or take, maybe three pounds uh, out of one of these sausages right here. We're gonna set this one aside. I'm gonna do the rest of them. Now the key here is I'm not actually gonna smoke them until tomorrow. You want this meat to cure for about 24 hours before you actually 
cook it in the oven or put it in the smoker. So for today, I'm gonna finish stuffing all these sausages and then tomorrow morning, we'll pop them in the smoker and show you how to finish these things off. All right, well, it is the next day. These sausages have been curing for just about 24 hours now. Uh, I actually let them sit overnight in my Yeti cooler, which was great because this time of year, it's mid to late November. It was plenty cold out last night. I didn't have to worry about packing them into my refrigerator, packing them with ice, anything like that. Temperatures were well down into the low 30s last night. So in any case, uh, like I said, it's been about 24 hours. We've got all the sausages ready to go. We're gonna be using my pellet grill today to smoke these. You can use any type of smoker. In fact, you could actually just cook these in your oven if you really needed to, uh, but it seems to be the preferred method is to smoke them. You get the best flavor out of it. So uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take these, we're gonna lay them right on the rack inside of the smoker. We're gonna put the smoker as low as it can go temperature wise. I know if you read a lot of forums and blogs and watch other people's videos, you know, they've got all sorts of crazy you know, like formulas for um, how hot the smoker should be. Started at 145 for an hour and then 155 for two hours and all that stuff. Honestly, I've never done that and I've never had any issues with the sausage that I've cooked. I put my smoker as low as it will go. So on this particular one, it has like a super smoke mode, which keeps it under 200 degrees. Uh, we want to make sure that we're using a meat thermometer or a meat probe. I've got two different ones. One that's actually connected to my grill and then one that's a standalone. I like to have two just to kind of make sure that they're accurate. You want to cook these or smoke these until the internal temperature of this sausage is somewhere between 152 and 160 degrees. That's kind of the optimal temperature that you're looking for. Um, it's going to take a couple of hours, no doubt, to cook these. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get them in here. We're going to turn the smoker on and we will see you guys in a couple hours to finish these things off. All right, well, it's been about uh, five, five and a half hours. We are reading 156 degrees on the thermometer. So we're gonna call it done. I went ahead and turned the smoker off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out a little bit warm. But the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our sausages, ready to go. And we've got the Yeti cooler filled with cold water. So we're gonna go ahead and just drop these right into that cold water bath to stop them from cooking anymore. And we're gonna call it good. We'll let them cool down, cut them open, and show you guys what we got.